what about the black community in the in the area? Did they know what was going on? They didn't know what was going on until the next morning. They didn't know what was going on. So you were there with these tens of thousands of, of angry white people. Yeah. And they were half they had beaten you half to death and were dragging you out to be lynched. That's right. So you got out to the, to the to the courthouse square. Is that where? Yes, it was? and and they they put a rope around my neck, and they pushed me up between Tom and Abe. They I stood with death on both sides of me, and uh, I prayed to God. I said, Lord, have mercy, forgive me my sins, and I was ready to die, and I was glad to be leaving a world full of so many false and deceitful people. And uh, when I said that, a voice came out from heaven. It echoed down and said, take this boy back. He had nothing to do with any killing or raping. And I was the only one that heard that voice. But yet the whole crowd obeyed the hand that had been rough and kind of rough and ready to kill, became soft and kind and tender. And they took that rope off my neck, and they allowed me to stumble and stagger back to the jail. When I got back to the jail, which was just a half a block away, the sheriff was standing out there with his puny self, saying, I'm going to get you out of here for safekeeping. Well, hell, it was too late for that. He had a chance to get both, all three of us out of there for safekeeping. So uh, he hustled me in the jail down in the basement, and he called one of his deputies down there, and he opened the door and said, see that car parked at the curb there? I said, yeah. He said, I want you to go and get in there when I give you the signal. I said, okay. So this guy he had called down was a great big cop. He had a pistol on his hip, looked like a cannon instead of a regular police police stage, a police revolver. And uh, he said, you stand right here. Well, I wasn't going to move until somebody told me to move. And he went and got into the car, sat behind the driver's seat, and uh, pretty soon another guy got into the driver's passenger side, and then the sheriff gave me a signal and said, now you go down there and run and get in the car. So I ran and got into the car in the back seat, and I was the only one in the back seat at that time, and I noticed the rifles and guns hanging on the leaning up against the panels of the car. And I said, now they, they probably think I'm going to grab these sounds so they'd have a chance to shoot me. That was the thing that went through my mind. Sure. And uh, pretty soon two more detectives came around the corner and got into the back seat with me. And it was a brand new Studebaker. And uh, they said, get your black ass down here on the floor. I said, I ain't going to get hurt protecting a damn nigger like you. And they drove off. And when they drove off, the, the tires were, were skidding, like they're telling people something was happening on the other side of the jail, you know. And uh, they got me to Huntington, Indiana. Where do you think that voice came from? I think it came from above, from heaven above. Because I had prayed, Lord, have mercy, forgive me my sins. And, and just then, like that, the, the, the crowd, just everything stopped? And the crowd you could, you could hear a pin drop. Before that, it was like like in a ball game where the, the main player got up and hit a home run. There's so much cheering and going on. But when I heard that voice, everything got deathly quiet. I was the only one that heard that voice, and people around me at that time said they didn't hear anything. You were just lucky. Just lucky? <laughs> it was obviously more than luck. Yes, it was. I mean... For something like that to happen, and for the crowd to part and allow you to go unharmed away from them? I was allowed to stumble and stagger back to the jail. 
Were you, what was going through your mind at that point? I don't know. I guess everything was going through my mind. I was wondering why, why, why they beat on me like they did. Why did they lynch Tom and Abe? And why did they have me standing there between them on the tree, on the death tree?